Do you like the idea of Botox but not the needles? If you're interested in improving the appearance of your periocular region with an at-home treatment, you're not alone. Our Giraline is an over-the-counter product that some call Botox in a bottle. But does it pass the eye test for use around those precious peepers? Find out in today's video. Welcome to Eye School with Dr. D, where my goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every week. Welcome to iSchool. I'm your host, Dr. D. I make videos about dry eye, cosmetics, and aesthetics around the eye because in my 12 years of clinical practice, I've seen these three things collide on a daily basis. The usage of OTC, aesthetic, and cosmetics has exploded. Lash serums, extensions, and anti-aging. My goal is to analyze these products and give you good information about their safety around the eye so you can make your own educated decisions on whether or not to use a particular product. The theme of iSchool is lifelong eye education, so I always want to know what you're learning and request videos from me about new topics. If you do find this video informative today, please consider hitting that thumbs up because it lets YouTube know that this educational video is helpful. All right, iSchool pupils, let's take a look at today's topic, Botox in a bottle or Argireline. You may have seen products containing Argireline here on YouTube or even on Amazon. The Ordinary makes a version that's popular among YouTubers and there are lots and lots of videos about it. I was able to quickly find a version on Amazon that's specifically advertised for use around the eyes as an eye gel and touts the ability to reduce wrinkles, puffiness, and dark circles. So first, let's talk a little bit about Argireline and what it is. It's actually just the brand name for a synthetic polypeptide called acetyl hexapeptide 3 or acetyl hexapeptide 8. As a quick reminder, peptides are short chains of amino acids, which are the foundation for proteins, including collagen and elastin, making them essential for healthy, youthful skin. So this particular um, polypeptide is a fragment of SNAP25, a substrate of botulinum toxin. If that sounds familiar, it's because botulinum toxin is Botox. So this particular peptide does prevent muscle movement and also promotes collagen production. So it seems like a really great idea on the surface. So Argireline acts as a competitive SNAP25 inhibitor. It inhibits the release of acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction, and it temporarily paralyzes superficial facial muscles. So compared to Botox, its potency is lower, but then so is its toxicity. There are two types of wrinkles. By the way, did you know that the scientific term for wrinkles is rytids? I had no idea. But there's two types that occur from either dynamic movement um, or repeated muscle movement around the eyes. So there's the 11s and there's crow's feet. We know that Botox is incredibly effective for both of those types, 11s and crow's feet. So wouldn't it be nice if there was a needleless option that was also safe for the eyes? So there's recently a pre-print article that discusses it. I will link that down below. It's a pre-publication titled Complications and Adverse Effects of Periocular Aesthetic Treatments. The authors in that discuss a study by Wang and coworkers which compared the effect of 10% argireline in an oil versus placebo. They demonstrated a 30% reduction in the depth of wrinkles in the argireline group with no adverse effects. So evidence is limited, but it's possible that argireline could be a safer treatment option for periorbital wrinkles. There was a recent pre-publication titled Complications and Adverse Effects of Periocular Aesthetic Treatments. The authors discuss in that paper a study by Wang and co-workers which was comparing the efficacy of 10% argireline in an oil versus placebo. They did demonstrate a 30% reduction in the depth of wrinkles in the argireline group and did not record any adverse effects. But I would say that evid evidence is limited and it's possible, it is possible that argireline could be a safer treatment method. However, other studies did not demonstrate the same effectivity and also suggested that argireline had reduced efficacy on younger, thicker skin, working much better on older and thinner skin. So we must also consider the effect on your ocular muscles. So the problem is with argireline is that it's neurotoxic 
and it can weaken the orbicularis muscle, creating the promised wrinkle smoothing effect, but also potentially working counter to our blink exercises that we tell you to do. So your blink is extremely important in the production of your tears and the wetting of your ocular surface. And so if you're um, using a neurotoxin on your muscles that help you blink, that can adversely affect your ocular surface and your tear composition and contribute to dry eye. So it's important to do blink exercises. They promote tear wetting and spreading, lid to lid contact and mechanical expression of the mybum or the oils from the mybomian glands into the tears themselves. So should you use Argireline? Well, it may be well marketed and you may come across versions that say that they're hydrating or safe. Many do contain hyaluronic acid and you know I typically like that moisturizer for use around the eye. But unfortunately, I cannot recommend and I do not recommend using Argireline in general. I also found another study and article where um, dermatologists were quoted as saying they don't tend to either and have found that the results are not really as promised, not doing the wrinkle reducing that um, we would like it to do. So one website, Truth in Aging, it's a website with a mission to provide unbiased guidance on beauty and personal care products. They contend that even a 10% concentration of argireline would be ineffective. They claim this is because the peptide isn't potent enough to penetrate be behind the first few layers of skin and thus cannot provide that desired freezing effect in the muscles. A 2013 Chinese randomized placebo-controlled study, one of the studies that featured human patients, also notes the contraindications and concluded that despite being you know, safe and somewhat effective, the ability of it to permeate the skin is inadequate, resulting in significant waste. So this study speculated that perhaps younger, thicker skin may be too substantial a barrier for our Argireline to reach pivotal connections of the nerves and muscles. And those authors concluded that Argireline might have more of an impact on older, thinner skin. So what is the verdict on Argireline or Botox in a bottle? The verdict for now is a no. I cannot recommend using it. The studies do show that it may have some impact, although maybe not enough. Um, while it may be safe for the skin, there are concerns about what it does to your blink, what it does to the muscles around the eyes and how that would impact the blink. And so this is another one that I would put on the let's not try it list, especially if you have dry eye. That is it for today's lesson. I hope that you enjoyed it and learned something. I certainly did. Remember, learning is lifelong, so make sure to stay tuned in the future by subscribing. I continually update my videos as my understanding evolves, and I wouldn't want you to miss a thing. That's it for today. I'll see you next time.